Good morning, everybody. Today we are at the Yuma Territorial Prison State Park. And it is chilly. It is like 60 degrees outside. Yesterday it was 95. Today it is 65. And I heard even yesterday in Southern California, it snowed in the mountains, which is crazy for May. But we are here in Yuma on a little mini road trip. So let's head on into this historic prison and get this adventure started. It is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. This prison is right on the edge of the Colorado River. Right on the other side of the river there is California. So I was doing some research on this prison this morning and last night, and it opened in 1876, and the first seven inmates actually built the prison. That's pretty insane. Building your own prison and then going in there. That's pretty crazy. And it was open for 33 years, so it closed in 1909. And there was over 3,000 inmates that stayed here at different points in time, and about 29 or 30 women, from what I understand. Really neat. We're gonna take a guided tour at 10 o'clock. It's about 9.05 or 9.10 now. We're gonna go do some exploring by ourselves for a little bit, and then get on that guided tour. There's where we came in at. That is the original guard tower. And right here, the original entrance to the prison, called the Sally Port. And Sally Port drives from the Spanish words Sali de la Porta, which means go out the door. But they wanted to change it to Sally Port to make it easier for English speakers. So we're gonna go check out the guard tower now. Amanda's leaving me behind, as always. So we walked up, here is the guard tower. Actually, I read on the website that they do yoga up here in the mornings. We won't be doing that today. From up here you can get a good view of the Sally Port and the entrance to the prison which they just informed me was the old mess hall. And back there a little further is the cell block. That will be really interesting to explore. We're walking down the steps now and we're gonna go into the Sally Port and enter the prison. Yes. You're going to jail. No. No, no, you're gonna go to jail. Prison, sorry. And we're walking in. Ooh, a skylight. A little steel bars, but they really didn't want to get out. That is the original food. That is crazy. Thick. Hello! We're walking into the old mess hall, which is now a museum. They have a diorama right when you walk in the door. Of what the prison looked like back in its heyday, in the late 1800s and early 1900s. It's quite big. So that there is the only guard tower that still exists. There is the Sally Port right there. What I thought was really, really neat is right here, they have a little doghouse. That's cool. They have some old prison clothes in here. Wow, those look warm. And it gets really, really hot in Yuma, so that would be really warm to wear in the summertime. Some old tools and some shaving stuff from a barber shop. All kinds of old stuff and trays, old school camera. Imagine vlogging with that thing. Holy crap. That'd be heavy. Get my arm or get tired. They have some of the old guns and pistols. Really neat. Spurs. Ooh, a little Derringer looking gun. The lever action gun. The bugle. Wake everybody up in the morning. That is really neat. This is all physician stuff for the doctors. They had a really good hospital here back in the day. And they have a Gatling gun in here. That would be really fun to shoot. These were some of the women that had the opportunity to stay in the prison for doing a number of different things from adultery to manslaughter to receiving stolen property. Crazy. Every prisoner has their story. This 
these are some of the original cells here. That is cool. To be very frank with you, uh, the reason why the dark cell was created was very basic punishment at its highest level. If you so much as spit on the ground in front of a guard, that was showing disrespect. You got two days in there, or still I take you in there, okay? If you so much as talk back to a guard in a disrespectful manner, you got ten days in there. John Lawton, a boy from Oklahoma City, 23 years old, criminal, spent 105 days in there. 105 days consecutively. When he came out, Oh, what kept him from going insane, I'm surmising this, okay? He was just me, plain me. But when he came out, a miraculous thing happened to, to him. He got it. He became a model prisoner. And he was pardoned a year later, never to return to prison again. Well, this is the uh, epitome of depression, uh, negativity, sadness, all of the above. This is it. You're in the dark cell. This room was 15 feet by 15 feet wide. Oh, that's pretty close. Now, this actually uh, foundation on the floor here made of scrap iron. This is the original foundation. Now, just imagine, ladies and gentlemen, a cage over this foundation, 10 feet by 9 feet, only 5 feet high. There was a door here. You entered this door. This is where you ate. This is where you slept. One more thing I wanted to mention before we walk out uh, to a much more positive area. <laughs> um, a young lady from the Yuma Sun and Reporter, she challenged us. She said she would spend a night in here by herself with no flashlight. What was she thinking, huh? Great. Only a radio, very brave little girl, talking. Well, she was in here for two and a half hours, ladies and gentlemen, and she was screaming to get out. She heard voices muffled screams and muffled conversations wow. again folks i totally believe her i feel very uncomfortable in here you know why i come in here for my guests there's a lot of negativity in here it's horrible. that's how you awaken in the morning at all six we just got out of the tour it took about 45 minutes long. That guy volunteers here. That is super cool. We thank him so much for doing what he did. He took us around, showed us a lot of really neat stuff, and told us some really neat stories in this place. Yeah, so we're going to take our time, kind of go through everything he just went over with us, and since we know a little bit more of the history, and kind of explore the cells and go back into that one, what is it called? The dark cell? The dark room. The dark cell. We're going to go see what it's like in there with just us. And we're going to take you with us. This is the last remaining cell block here. And they filmed uh, quite a few movies here. It closed in 1909, like I was telling you earlier. And during the Great Depression, a lot of the homeless people actually lived here, took up residence on their own. It wasn't like a shelter they set up, it was just they took over residence here to have a place to live. Amanda is checking out the first cell here. And it has the original cots and beds in here. Fit six per cell in here, and that was a chamber pot. That was their only source of being able to use the restroom. They like said they cleaned it out once a day. That is nasty. Ooh. It's really neat walking down here. You get a sense of what it felt like back in the time when this was an operating prison. It's quite eerie. And these are the original locks and doors of the prison. And as you can see, they were actually double gated to protect the guards and keep those guys in here. This was a maximum security prison back then and one of the most sophisticated of its time. And actually when you when they opened the doors, that would come out towards us and the doors would have to go inwards so that way they couldn't rush the door and push it out. Please let me out. I promise I'll be better. Just let me out of here. Can you imagine the people that used to be in these cells? That'd be... It's really sad. It is sad. <laughs> but I imagine how hot it gets out here. You know, 120 plus degrees and being stuck in these cells here. I was... Yesterday was hot for me and like 90 degrees with just a little bit of breeze. So I could not imagine over 100 with yeah. inside a cell with no breeze. At least they're insulated kind of well, but I guess they used to put fans down at the one end and 
kind of blow the air in and actually in the town of Yuma a lot of people called this place the country club because they had electricity in 1885 they had a full hospital a dentist office and a barber shop you can see why they kind of call it a country club when you're outside and you don't even have that stuff they did have plumbing you're right they had I think three toilets. three toilets a couple showers and it was mandatory you had to take a shower once a week and if you didn't you got two nights in the dark cell we don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. We're going to go into the, what would be the solitary confinement. We're going to go in the dark cell and check it out. It says that sometimes in here there's bats. And this right here was at the bottom of the cage that they would be kept in. And it's five feet tall. They've since cut it all off and just left this on the floor, but this is what is left of the dark cells, about 15 by 15. That does not look very comfortable. And you'd only be able to be in your underwear in here and be given bread and water. This is no bathroom in here, no shower in here. Whew. And up here was the only, only source of light. That's it. Other than that, it would be completely black in here. Oof, people, many people have lost their minds in here. But the guy that's been 104 days came out and was a model citizen. Here's the tool shed here. And on the door of the tool shed is a picture of the people building the prison. Now those are actually inmates. This whole prison was built by the inmates. It's forced labor. Crazy. Here's the tools that, some of the tools that they uh, used to build the prison. You had to get them checked out and checked back in every night. And if one tool wasn't checked back in at the end of the evening, no, no, no one would eat dinner that night. Over here off to the side of the dark cell in the tool shed is one of three women's cells. That is the actual prison cell there. That is kind of rough. Just dug into the side of the mountain here. We're going to go over to the new cell block area now. They're a little bit newer cells. And this is the, what they call the new yard here. It's built in the 1900s. They actually filmed a lot of movies here in the 1920s. That door area right there, John Wayne filmed his first movie in here, in that doorway, in the Three Musketeers in 1938. The new cells over here that they constructed later on were a little bit smaller. Only uh, four occupants per cell over here, and apparently Julian was here at some point. I can only imagine what went on in these cells while the inmates were in here. The stories these walls could tell. They had a library here as well to teach the prisoners how to read and the ones that could read could use all the books. And actually on Sundays for a quarter, the public can come in here and use all the books. That's really neat. Escapes. It says that there's 138 escaped attempts in here. Not all of them made it either. Not all of them made it out alive. Eight were killed while trying. And those are some really old handcuffs there. And talk about the old ball and chain, there, there's the literal sense of it. There's once a riot here, Gates riot, where seven inmates took the superintendent hostage in 1887. Five of them were killed. And actually the superintendent was stabbed in the back. And I was just curious if it was with that knife or not. The history here is really, really neat. There's a picture of Thomas Gates, the guy that uh, got taken hostage and his years of uh, service as superintendent here. 
Well, that was our day at the Yuma Territorial Prison Museum. That was really neat. This is a state park. Um, we really enjoyed you guys coming and joining us. We really hope you guys enjoyed. Now it's time for us to head back home to San Diego and get ready for the week. So thanks again for joining us. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to continue on with our adventures, follow us at the Scott Venture on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks, guys. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye.